Hi, I'm George and welcome to the final episode of The Cellador New Zealand. I'm here in central Otago and I'm about to head to Bannockburn to catch up with the people at Takano Estate. I'm going to taste some of their wine and I'm going to check out their local revegetation project in action. From Golden Bay, we started our 14 hour drive to central Otago, winding along the beautiful Buller River, past glacial waterways and heading down the rugged west coast. Lake Wanaka provides a spectacular base to explore the region, but I'm heading a bit further south, past Lake Dunstan to our last stop, Takano Estate. Later in the show, I'll be learning about their extensive regeneration project and doing some more good old fashioned hard yakka. Like that? Oh, perfect. I'll also be seeing the historic gold sites amongst their vineyards and, of course, trying their delicious Chardonnay and Pinot Noir. But first, I'm meeting head winemaker Dave at their stunning cellar door. George, welcome to Takano. Thank you, Dave. Thanks for having me. This is incredible. Yeah, tell me about it. <laughs> so you've been here for four years. Yes, that's And this right. is a new winery. Yeah, so Takano Estate has been around since 2017, mm -hmm. um, but the vineyards that we own and we make our wine from are up to 20 years old, some mm. of them. So this is the Kawarau River, which flows through the Gibston Valley and up to Queenstown behind us. Mm -hmm. um, to our left is the ranges which head over to Southland, and to our right this is the Pisa ranges which go all the way through to Wanaka. So this is really the crux of uh, quite a large series of mountain ranges. So you're sort of cushioned on all sides. We're cushioned in here and that's what gives Central Otago its unique continental climate. Mm. We've got a full buffer between us and the sea and so summers are very hot and winters are very cold. Mm. And what sort of grapes are we looking at down it's here? It's 100% Pinot Noir which is what we do best and what we specialise in. Mm -hmm. But this isn't a Pinot Noir is it? Oh this is Pinot Noir. It is. Yeah. But it's so light. Yes, so this wine is called a Blanc de Noir. Mm -hmm. uh, we make it in the way that you would make a champagne. So we whole bunch uh, press the grapes first thing in the morning. Uh, they get really gently handled. And as soon as we see just the faintest tinge of colour, we stop pressing and we ferment it as a white wine. Ah. And it's just such a beautiful style for the summertime. It's so peachy. It is peachy. Aromatic, not like a red wine at all. No. It's got those lovely white florals and it's just a beautiful fresh wine. Mm. That's delicious. It is delicious. Mm. Well done. This is one of yours that you made? That's right. And this comes off the block below us. This vineyard is called Eliza. Mm -hmm. And this wine and all of our wines will be certified organic this year. So it's been a three year conversion to organics and um, we're really excited to see that come through. Yeah, that's great. And organics and conservation are sort of something at the heart of Takano. Oh, it's the key to everything we do. Mm -hmm. um, we really care about the land and our footprint on it. And um, Takano for us is really a legacy that we're leaving for our children. That's beautiful. Well, I might have a little tour around the rest of your vineyards with your estate manager, Nick. Be my guest. I shall. I'll come back and be your guest a little later on. Cheers. Thanks. Next, I'm meeting operations manager Nick up the road on the eastern side of Lake Dunstan at their Northburn vineyard. This vineyard was first planted in 2016. It's a mix of varieties and clones across varying soil types. You've kind of planted according to soil type and the soils yes. vary so much that this block is different to this block which is a couple of metres that way. It's absolutely crazy but the fact that we've planted vineyards so late in the 2000s there's a lot of really good technology available mm. to us so we can map soils, um, different types of vigour so we can match root stocks mm. um, and just try and get the absolute best we can out of every parcel 
of land that we've got here. Mm. The soils here are, are amazing. They're quartz, schist, and a lot of deep clays below, which is perfect for Pinot Noir production. So that's why they can sort of, you can work hold on this moisture, irrigation. Hold mm. moisture, release, mm -hmm. and also, even though the stones are hard, they it's really easy for the vine roots to get amongst them and um, find what they're looking for. Cool. This What's little, that? This little stone here, this is typical of what's in the area. You can see the high, oh, wow. see the high shine. It looks like gold. It's definitely not gold, unfortunately, <laughs> but what it is is it's quartz, mica and schist. Oh, wow. And you can see how shiny and bright it is. Yeah. And that, that brightness helps us in the vineyard like with light exposure and really helps push oh, so it the, reflects back reflects up to back the ground. Oh wow. How the stone is really angular, um, these soils were all formed by glacial movement. So as the as the glaciers advanced and retracted, huge um, huge tracks of rock were cut and this this is um, this is how the rock's been cut. It's been cut almost like with a knife. By a glacier. Yeah by glaciers. Wow, that's so cool. Tell us a little bit about the conservation side of things. So in regards to irrigation, we monitor our, our water use. We dig a lot of holes during the season. We look at the vines. What do you mean you dig a lot of holes? We dig a lot of holes looking for soil moisture, uh -huh. figuring out what's dry, what needs water, and generally not trying to over irrigate. Mm -hmm. That's really key to us is maintaining maintaining the site terroir without without trying to even everything out mm. with water. Mm -hmm. As the vines age, we're starting to see less reliance on water as the roots roots get into the soil, they search between the rocks and the schist and they're really, really hunting for water. And, they, and we expect in time, our irrigation requirements will come right down. Mm, that's great. They'll never be zero, but we will be working towards less water long term. Mm -hmm. uh, what kind of plants we're standing in at the moment. So this block here is Pinot Noir. They're looking pretty good. Yeah, we're very excited about the upcoming vintage. It's mm. the second drop off these vines. <laughs> so we had a bit of a taster last year and look really looking forward to getting some some significant volume this year off this block. Yeah, great. We have um, three varieties here at Northburn. We have Pinot Noir, obviously, Pinot Gris, and we've got Chardonnay as well. <laughs> are those typical of the Central Otago Yes, region. they are, and uh, we're very excited about the Chardonnay that we're going to take first crop off this year. Oh, great. As well as preserving the soil through water moderation, Takano has gone to great lengths to restore the native vegetation. So all of our vineyards are rabbit fenced, um, and we make sure that we fence off these historical areas so that we can maintain them for future generations. Mm -hmm. So this property is 80 hectares and currently we have 40 hectares of vineyard planted. So there's a lot of areas we've chosen not to plant, we've chosen to be sympathetic to the landscape and really preserve those, those areas of, of historical significance. Takano means the seed and that and that, that's the nucleus of everything we're doing here. Um, there's an old Kofi tree at the top of the property which has been aged at 400 years old. Yeah. Right. And so we've taken seed from that tree and we've planted out over 500 native Kofi's in various locations in the vineyard. So, so far we've planted over 5,000 uh, native, native plants of different, different species. And do you, you've got a nursery here where you propagate Yes, we do. Can we go to the nursery? Absolutely, let's go. Okay, great. It's great. Whilst filming the Cellar Door New Zealand in the stunning Wanaka region, our crew chose to stay with the luxurious Wanaka Unlocked. Less than an hour's drive from Queenstown Airport, Wanaka delivers a truly unique New Zealand experience and Wanaka Unlocked showcases the best that our beautiful town has to offer. With a large selection of premium properties, your choice of mountain and lake views, lodges and villas to holiday houses and apartments. There's no end to the Wanaka luxury to choose from. Visit wanakaunlock.com to book your stay today. Before I plant a Kofi tree, 
Viticulturalist Steve is walking me through the on-site nursery. I suppose you're working with the vines and you're working with these native species? Yes, yep, we like to combine, combine the two. Yeah, great. Uh, what sorts of plants have you got here? Uh, so we've got a mixture of plants from uh, Corfi, uh, we have tussocks here in front of us. These guys are tussocks? Yes, yep. And these are the Corfi, they're the big old tree that you were talking about, Nick? Yes, that's yep. great. Yeah. Uh, we have cabbage trees over here in the back. Um, we have flaxes. These flaxes? They're, those are cabbage trees. Yes, that's what These I thought. These ones here are flaxes. Yep. Mm -hmm. And we also have uh, a few native, other native trees such as ribbon woods. So how many plants are you sort of putting in the ground? Uh, we're aiming year? for about 5,000 okay. plants a year. Yeah. Yeah. And 500 of those are the kofi from the the old man kofi up oh, on top yeah. of the hill. And are that, that's these little these yes. ones. Yes. yes. Yep. And so you get all of your seeds from that tree? For the kofi, yes. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. And it's something we enjoy, it's something that we're passionate about and you know, it really adds diversity into what we're doing mm. here. We, we come to work, we aren't just grape growers, we are, we're gardeners in a sense. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty conservationists. Cool. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Are we going to do some planting? Yes we are, yep. Great. We're going to plant a couple of gold fire. Okay, cool. Let's go get our hands dirty. Cool. Let's go. After picking our co-fire trees, we're heading up into the hills overlooking Lake Dunstan. So I'm at the Takano Conservation Area. I've got my co-fire tree. I'm going to plant it. Yes, we are. Yep. Uh, I've dug a hole. Mm -hmm. I've definitely dug it myself, expertly. And now what? <laughs> Alright, I'm going to take the uh, co-fire out of its bag. Okay. Take it a bag over the hole. Okay. And do I put anything in it before I tip it in? Uh, yes, we do. We put some. Put a bit of compost and fertilizer in. Just a bit of food to get it going. Yep. What's it made of? Um, mainly peat and, and bark. Oh yep. yeah. Great. Okay. And then I very gently <laughs> and expertly. Look at that. Perfect. Yes, it was perfect. <laughs> Alright, I'll we'll grab the shovel and we'll just put a little bit more dirt around that. Oh, I'm sitting on the dirt, that's good. Okay, so this will all go back on top. And then once we've, once we, because we're both doing this obviously, <laughs> we've put the dirt on, what happens now? Uh, then we take we have two products here. They're both made from coconut husks. Uh, so they're quite, coconut husks. quite tough. Yes, yeah. And so one of them suppresses weeds around the plant. Oh, that's this one? Yep. So a little bit. Oh, yeah. You've got some nasty little guys here. Are they native? No, they're not, unfortunately. Get out of here. <laughs> okay. So this will stop them from growing yes, up yep. around it? Yep. And then what does this one do? And this one here just protects the young corfi from uh, from rabbits. Right. So there's still a problem because yes. you have got a fence around, don't yep. you, to Property protect is, everything? Yeah, fence, but the, just want to make sure that we give these plants the best start they can mm -hmm. have. And how long does it take for them to sort of mature? Uh, it can take uh, decades for right. them to mature. Yeah. Just like people. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so that's all there. Yep. And we thread it on. And then we thread each side with the So there's little stuck. holes in here. Yes, yes. Oh, so yes. The thread from through from the top. So how many of these could you do or would you do usually in one planting? Uh, each person could do 50 in right. a day. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty labor intensive. Yeah. It's a big yep. project. And there should be two holes. There is one. Your side. Yep. And is that it? That's, That's that? It. Yeah, it's perfect. And so then this little guy will have a bit of water? Yeah, yep, we'll move the irrigation oh, line over. Okay. Yep. Unfortunately, there's not enough annual rainfall in central Otago to get these guys to thrive for the first few years. Right. So we'll just give them a helping hand. And then after a few years? We cut the irrigation back. Okay. Yeah. And then and they then just they survive on their own. Grow. So in 50 years or so, you're going to have a 
forest. Yes, yep. Amazing. Hopefully a forest and a few native birds as well. Oh, great. Good luck, little guy. Well, I'm a bit thirsty after all that hard work, so I'm heading back to the cellar door to see what wines Dave has lined up for me. So, Dave, I have planted a kofi tree. Yes, good for you. Thank you, and good for you guys too. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, Contrib you're welcome. <laughs> contributing to our conservation effort. Yeah, and the kofi tree is incredibly important to Tikano. Yeah, it's essentially the fulcrum of our entire ethos. Everything that we do, um, whether it's making wine or conservation or building buildings, we often go back to the, the Ko-Fi, the image of it and what it symbolises to us. And then we ask ourselves, you know, are our actions today leaving the legacy we want to we leave for the future? We feel that, like a Ko-Fi seed that we're planting at Northburn, this entire project is the seed of something which will blossom for people which come well beyond our time. Mm. It's even reflected on our labels, so all of our labels have a Kofi flower and that helps remind us of why we're doing what we're doing. And this is the Kofi flower here as well, isn't it? It is, yep. So in our cellar door here we have all New Zealand artists and uh, all of their artwork in some way reflects sustainability, conservation or the Kofi itself. So this piece here is by a well-known New Zealand photographer called Fiona Partington. It's a gorgeous piece. The owner of Takano is uh, Californian, Rhonda Lloyd. Um, she married a New Zealander about 20 years ago and fell in love with, not just with him obviously, but with his culture. Um, so in 2016, they purchased the property at Northburn and they began that huge conservation effort mm. that you would have seen with Nick this morning. Yeah, it's incredible out there. But I mean, this is also incredible. This cellar door is just... Oh, it's amazing. Yeah, it's a beautiful space and it's a space which we wanted to use to give people a different sort of wine experience. We want them to feel at home here mm. and we want it to really be more of a wine lounge than a cellar door. So yeah. we invite people to come in, sit, have a glass of wine, not just stand up, taste and leave. Mm. So it was designed by architects called Mason and Wales. They're New Zealand's oldest architecture firm and they really wanted to create something which felt like it had dropped out of the sky but at the same time felt like it was a part of the landscape mm. and so this building is cantilevered over the vines below it gives a beautiful view of the surrounding vineyards and mountains and river um, and the materials that it's built from are made to weather mm. so it'll slowly erode or it'll slowly become more and more a part of its environment. I mean it looks like that already, that sort of weathered iron. Weathered iron and contrasted with a really polished interior mm -hmm. but at the same time very inviting. Very inviting, just like this glass of Chardonnay. Yeah, so this is our Chardonnay. Mm -hmm. um, which you made. Yes, which I made. Mm -hmm. um, this is 2018 which was a beautiful vintage in central Otago. Um, Chardonnay is probably one of the unsung heroes of the central wine industry. We're really well known for Pinot Noir um, and if you look around the world historically great Pinot Noir regions are also great Chardonnay regions. Mm. So Yeah so minerality is one of the sort of defining characteristics of a central Otago Chardonnay? I feel so. We get really uh, hot days. Uh, it can be up to 40 degrees during the day here but then at night it always flips to the cold mm. and that diurnal range means that we keep that really flinty acidity but we get the ripe flavours during the day's ripening. Mm. So you get lovely peachy notes mm -hmm. while at the same time retaining that citrusy flinty minerality. Mm. So yeah I love that wine and I think Central Otago Chardonnay has, has just got a brighter and brighter future as people mm. slowly realise what it, what it is. That's delicious. Yeah, it's lovely. It's a gentle Chardonnay, but it does have quite a sort of like strong acid through line. Yeah, that's right. Mm. So the Chardonnay, all of our Chardonnays are uh, barrel fermented in French oak and they stay in oak for 10 months. Mm -hmm. um, and we do a lot to build that mid palate complexity, but the, the backbone of the wine is that really firm, bright acid. Mm. So yeah, we're blessed to have that. Mm. It's so good. You don't really make fantastic wines, you, you grow fantastic grapes mm -hmm. and so it's Nick Hunter and it's it's the team in the vineyard who really deliver what's in this bottle of wine. You 
know, I, I can guide it and be a conduit for it, but I don't want to put my stamp on it. Mm -hmm. I, want, I want it to reflect the place that it's from. Uh, all the other wine regions are influenced by the sea. They're the main, the main driver of their weather. Um, Central Otago being a, a bowl in the mountains is completely isolated from that maritime influence. And so we can have big tropical cyclones coming through the South Island and it, it's just pouring rain in other places and then it's a beautiful sunny day in Central Otago. <laughs> so it really is like this little bubble which is separated from the rest of the country. Mm. And it, it makes really unique wines and it really allows purity of fruit, that expression of terroir. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not having to make compromised decisions based on bad weather. We really pick at the optimum time. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the lucky country. Over a hundred years ago, this area was full of miners searching for gold, a legacy still very much apparent here today. So Nick, this is an old mine working? Yes. So wh what is it? <laughs> so essentially, uh, the water races that we saw earlier, mm -hmm. feeding the water around the side of the hill from the, from the snow melt, came into these valleys here, and the water was essentially sluiced down under high pressure and all the rocks were washed and then once the rocks were washed all of those rocks were hand stacked back behind the workings and all the material was sluiced down in through a in through a mining setup where the material was separated from the gold and that was what was left behind so, so did, it was arranged like this so that it would run better totally it, right. it would run better and also the miners had an idea of what what material they'd already mined. Oh, so sure. they would move the rocks behind them as they went, and all of these rocks were hand stacked. Yeah, so I mean, there are some pretty massive rocks down there. Yeah, so a rock like that would take at least five people to move, wouldn't it? It's pretty amazing that these guys endured the winters that they endured here, all looking for their little piece of... Um, gold. Of gold. Of wealth. Yeah, absolutely. All up and down the river here, there were there were big mines and big sluicing machines that would um, big dredges, and they would go through the go through the material again and pull out more and more gold. So under that lake, there are all the like old mine sites. And the stuff. old tailings, yes. Oh, cool. And that's what this is. This is a tailing. Yes, that's right. So it's areas like this amongst the vineyard which make this vineyard interesting. Mm. And you can see like with all the separate parcels that we have, they were all around. These, these significant areas. It's like inco fully incorporated. Totally. That's enough gold mining for one day. Back to my usual style of gold class at the spectacular Tucano Celador, where it's time to taste the Pinot Noir. What are the main signature flavours of your Tucano Pinot Noir? So Central Otago as a region is known for very bright fruit, mm -hmm. um, for depth of tannin and structure, uh, for a lot of concentration because of that diurnal shift so it means we have a very long ripening window so we can hang the grapes on the vine for a lot longer and they just build in intensity um, the longer you can delay that picking decision and you're not forced to pick because you've got climbing alcohols the better mm -hmm. so Tucano in particular um, our wines I feel they're very expressive of the vineyards that they come from very deep alluvial clay um, it's been laid down through millennia of river movements and uplift mm -hmm. and so I, I find our wines have a real depth of kind of plum, cherry, mm -hmm. um, very deep, subtle tannins, sometimes a hint of mocha. Mm -hmm. um, these glasses are extraordinary. Yeah, this is actually a Central Otago Pinot Noir glass. So, so it's designed specifically for Pinot from Central Otago. It is, yeah. How so, many wine regions have got I their think, own signature glass? There's, there's three for Pinot Noir. There's Oregon, Burgundy, and Central Otago. Mm -hmm. So of all the wine regions in the world, I guess that's making a statement about what company, we do. Pretty good yeah. <laughs> so you see you've got that lovely depth of fruit, that real bright cherry and plum. Mm. 
but it's got that beautiful backbone of tannin that'll help that wine to age with time. How long is it in the barrel for? So Tecano wines stay in barrel 12 months. Mm -hmm. Um, so we bottle them unfined and unfiltered. That's oh, sure. as little intervention as we can have, the better. Mm -hmm. And we always use the best French oak. Of course. Yeah, I love that wine. So good. It just, it really is a glass of central. It just pops out at you. Mm. It's, it's wonderful. Mm, it is delicious. Mm. Dave, thank you so much. What a treat to be in such a special place. Oh, you're welcome. Mm. And it's a pleasure to have you. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, they sound good on a cheers too. I've had such a wonderful time in New Zealand, from the brews and views in the north all the way to Golden Bay. But all good things must come to an end, and after crossing the stunning Cadrona Pass with a quick stop at Arrowtown, I took in one final majestic view atop the skyline in Queenstown before heading home. Of course, with so many places left to visit here in New Zealand, we had to plan a second trip. So although it's goodbye for now, we will see you back here next year for even more Cellador New Zealand. And as they say here, Kia ora. Kia ora.